Hi, how are you all doing? Week four of lockdown already. Crazy to think about, isn't it? And for those of us in London, it's actually been longer than that because we were in tier four beforehand anyway. So I'm currently sat on my terrace. It's absolutely freezing because it snowed yesterday, which is why I'm bundled up like this. Um, I've got my cup of tea here, which is inevitably going to get cold in a few minutes. So I'm gonna try and do this as quickly as possible. Are you all doing all right? I know that it's been tough. We had a little bit of respite yesterday, some of us anyway. There was snow in my area, so I went to Hampstead Heath. And so many people were just out there enjoying it with smiles on their faces. And it was really nice to see. It was almost like everyone forgot about the pandemic for a day. Alas, uh, we are still in a pandemic and on that note, I'm really worried about the vaccination rates in London because we've just found out that only 50% of our over 80 year olds have been vaccinated so far, which is lower than most other parts of the country. So uh, I know our MPs are looking into this and asking questions about it. Particularly, um, they're asking for more of a breakdown of data to try and understand what's going on here and uh, what needs to be done to fix it. So Manira Wilson, who leads on health and social care for the Lib Dems um, in particular, has been doing work on this, but also Leila Moran, um, who's on the coronavirus APPG in Parliament. And for myself, last week, I called for pharmacies to get involved in the vaccination rollout to help speed it up and also for improved communication with ethnic minority communities. And pharmacists can play a big role in that because um, they're much more representative of um, local populations where um, the percentage of ethnic minorities is higher, so they can help build confidence and um, create um, a desire to get the vaccine within the local community. So that's obviously the big challenge that we're facing. Uh, the cladding scandal sadly continues, um, but I've been doing a lot of work on that, um, particularly with Caroline Pigeon, who sits on the London Assembly for the Lib Dems. So last week, she and I and one of our other councillors, Hina Bakari, who's a councillor in Merton met with UK Finance who represent lenders in the UK to try and understand their perspective and it was just really clear that they want to get this issue sorted out as well because it's having an impact on the market. And we also met with the social housing regulator which regulates housing associations. Um, and of course they want these problems fixed in their stock but actually for some of the smaller and medium-sized um, housing associations, it's harder to address um, because they haven't necessarily got the capital to do it. So it's really clear that government needs to step in uh, and loans won't do. You know, the leaseholders who are affected by this should not be bearing the costs. They've bought their properties in good faith. So we'll keep pushing it was really interesting to get those perspectives um, and I hope that everyone who has a role to play in this steps up. Another thing that I did last week was um, engaging with some students. So I had an interview with the student paper of King's College where I actually did um, my third year of my undergraduate degree um, in history. Well not the whole of the third year but a course um, and the person interviewing me was also a history student so um, kindred spirit and he had some really interesting questions um, about the urban environment and how I'd make London a more friendly city for young people really important because we need to make sure that our city remains attractive to people growing up here and that people want to come and live here as well. I think this is one of the kind of challenges that has been set by the pandemic. I've got friends who are looking or already have moved out of London already. Um, so we have to make sure that London's affordable 
but also that it's got things that young people want and that that's obviously at an affordable price for them. So when I used to live in Paris, for example, there were all these free concerts that would happen in the summer and that was sponsored by the mayor of Paris. I think that's the kind of thing that we could look at doing as well. I think that would be pretty cool. On a darker note, um, I also attended an event online, of course, for Holocaust Memorial Day, which is coming up this Wednesday. Um, it was a couple of testimonies of survivors of uh, the Holocaust, and it's just such a privilege to hear from these survivors because it's really rare to hear their accounts of what happened we need to remind ourselves so that humanity never does that again but of course there are genocides happening elsewhere in the world most notably against the Uyghur population in China and they talked a little bit about that and drew the parallels and I think it's really important that the Jewish community has been leading on pointing this out this absolutely abhorrent abuse of human rights that's happening in China. Um, and it shows that we need to keep our eyes open um, because humanity can sadly quite easily act in quite inhumane ways. Um, not quite as extreme, but nevertheless scary. We had the storming of the US Capitol recently, and that was by people who wished to undermine democracy, undermine elected congressmen and women, and intended to cause them harm. Fellow human beings who were just trying to do their job as elected representatives. Um, and they talked a bit about that as well. And I think it shows we should never be blind to where hate can lead, even hate speech in and of itself. Um, and Holocaust Memorial Day is quite poignant for me personally this year because um, I actually had family um, who have my grandmother's maiden name who were killed in the Holocaust. They're listed on Yad Vashem. So that's on my great grandfather's side, but also on my great grandmother's side. Um, this family with her surname as well who appear in those records and I only found that out really recently it was really sobering so it's it's just a reminder that we need to stay vigilant on a more positive note there's been a big change in the US in the last week. We had the inauguration, finally, of Joe Biden. Donald Trump left the White House. Bye-bye. You won't be missed. Um, and Kamala Harris became the first female vice president of the United States. So exciting, such an incredible historic moment to watch. And yeah, that's a glass ceiling that's been shattered. By the way, we still need to smash one here in London because we've never had a female mayor. Um, but I'd love to hear what your favourite part of the inauguration was. I mean, I just love the ceremony from start to finish. I had CNN on in the background while I was doing my work and I was just hooked. But I particularly, like so many others, adored what Amanda Gorman had to say. We all now know those famous words that she ended on, there is always light, if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. I just found those words so incredibly inspiring and it's a reminder that we can all play our part in bringing about change in the world. So um, that's a wrap for this week, but um, leave me your comments, let me know how you're getting on. This is going to be a heavy week coming up for me because a lot of memories coming back um, from my last week as an MEP in the European Parliament last year. So I'll be giving some reflections on that at the end of this week. Stay safe, everybody. Bye.